Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some squares to our throwing game so that when the ball hits a square, we want that square to score a point. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to the Moodle site and I want you to download this new compiler. It's called Compiler New. And when you open up this compiler in Flash, uh, you'll notice a few things about it. It's got a boy, it's got an empty, it's got some rocks, square. These are some of the things that we are going to be using in the platform game. So you'll be using this compiler again. Today we're going to be using just though the square 2 symbol. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to though be creating a separate class and our class is going to have the same name as that graphic symbol or sorry as that movie clip symbol so we're gonna call it square two now in doing this what we're going to do is we're basically going to be extending the functionality of the square two when we do this this file associates itself with the square two movie clip that's inside of the library. So before when we have created our class up here, we've done extends sprite. Today we're going to be doing extends movie clip because that's exactly what we're doing. We are extending put a space in there. We're extending the movie clip uh, capabilities, uh, particularly the square two movie clips capabilities. So we're going to be doing an import just like we normally do, except this time we will be pointing instead to the movie clip importing the movie clip functions. Okay, so with our with our square, uh, we're, I'm just going to go ahead and get and start it like so. And the first thing that we're actually going to do is we the square that we are using the uh, movie clip. It's kind of large. You can see that it's wider than it is tall and I want to use it as just a square. So uh, just like when we've been working before with our classes, we can talk to the class as a whole and we can say that we want the width or we can say this, to be more specific, this dot width and then we can say how wide do we want the class to resize itself. So it's going to take that graphics actually going to resize the width to be 40 pixels. Then we're going to also redo the height and I'm just going to set that to be 40 as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and save out this script and so so far all we've done with this script is we've uh, just resized it um, with, a, um, with ActionScript in the constructor. And so I'm just going to hit save. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's just bring on some of these squares onto our, into our game. So we're going to go to the throw me and on our init function where we are setting our stage, we have brought on our ball, we've given a velocity, we've turned on the lights by uh, turning on the event listener for listening for whether or not you're going to uh, click down on the ball and we've turned on the enter frame uh, event listener for moving the ball around. Now we're also going to go ahead and bring on uh, a bunch of these squares. So we're going to need to be able to watch to see if a square is being is being touched. We're going to have to uh, watch that for each square. So what have we done in the past 
that where that allows us what have we used in the past that allows allow us to basically track each item when we want to bring on a bunch of them well we did it in the enemies we did that for the enemies and we created an enemy array so we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing here we're going to be creating a square array so let's go ahead and declare our array variable up here at the top I'm just gonna say square array and that's an array and then I'm gonna go ahead and just start my new array and <coughs> it's gonna be empty to start with and now that we have our array now we can go ahead and we can in our init function we can go ahead and bring on a bunch of these squares and we can store them in our array now how do we bring on a bunch of squares all at one time well I know you're all saying well we use a for loop and you're right we do so we're going to use our for loop and var of our i int make that equal to zero like we always do and we set our condition uh, while i is uh, less than and then we how many pieces do we want we're going to say 10 how about will increment our i va variable and then we're going to go ahead and say what do we want to uh, what do we want to loop for 10 times and of course what we want to do is we want to bring on we're going to create just a local variable here um, for our square and I'll just call it the square the square it's a square two data type and we're bringing on a new instance of square oops, square two okay now we're going to add uh, that to the stage of course add child uh, the square and then uh, we want to, of course, uh, randomly place these squares. Okay, so let's just uh, go ahead and we'll say the square dot x equals, uh, oops, let's put a random in there. We've got to get that random in there, yeah. Math dot random times, and we'll just do the width of the stage because that makes a certain amount of sense stage dot stage width and we'll do the same thing for the height where the square dot y equals math random and let's just times that by the stage dot stage height okay all right, so now we've randomly placed them, and now let's go ahead and put them into our array. So we have to talk to the square array, and we will push in the square. Okay, so now we've created our squares, we've pushed them all into the array. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we're going to go to our new compiler. And we're just going to put in the throw me, the throw me class. And we'll go ahead and we'll compile that. And so here we go. And we have the squares. Of course, they're not colliding yet but we have all the squares there and all the functionality still works okay so now uh, the first thing that uh, while we're still setting things up let's go ahead and also bring on a text field 
that can be our score box. And we already did this in our Add Enemy class that we were working on in, in, uh, in class. So uh, this shouldn't be, should not be new, uh, but we're going to do it again. Let's go ahead and let's start by declaring our private variable at the top for our text field. We are going to need to talk to our text field throughout this class, so we want this to be a class variable. Uh, let's call this uh, count or score box. That's what we did before. You really could probably copy and paste uh, the code from your add enemy over into this and it would be fine. Um, and I would encourage you to try to just copy and paste and, and reuse your code as much as possible. That's the whole point. We're, we're doing lots of code. We're trying to, you know, just reuse things as much as possible. So, and then we're also, as you remember from when we did this in class, we need to uh, create a variable that can store the actual number count. That's where we can actually apply addition to. So that's going to be, uh, we'll call that the score. And that is uh, going to be an integer because we're just going to use round numbers. And we're going to start that equal to zero. And then if you remember from class, uh, we can't just immediately put that score into the text field. The text field only accepts string data types, only accepts string data types. So we need to convert that score to a string. So we're going to use our score to, we're going to uh, create a score to string variable. And that will be a string data type, of course. Okay, so we've created our three variables that we need in order to have a score box. Now we can go into our init function and we can go ahead and just create our new instance uh, of the text field for our score box. So we can go ahead and we'll talk to score box, create our new text field instance. And then uh, we'll add it to the stage. And then we'll, of course, want to place it as well. So let's go ahead and place it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, last time we had it in the bottom right. Actually, I think we could, why don't we just do it in the upper right this time? Uh, so that'll be stage dot stage width. And let's go ahead and at least subtract the width of the score box. So uh, the score box dot width. Okay, so we're going to su subtract the score box width. Now, Oh, we need to make one amendment before we do that, uh, before we set it. If you remember, the text field defaults to 100 by 100. Let's adjust the uh, width and height of the score box. So after we do the add child, let's go score box uh, width equals, uh, let's say, 20. And let's set the height because we don't want it also to be too tall. Height equals 20. Okay, now when we do this, it will use that va value of 20 instead of 100. And of course, we want to, oh, whoops, this says score. That's not correct. And that needs to be score box. Yeah, I was typing too fast and y. We're going to set the y value stage. Uh, oh, the, oh, the y value. Um, we're going to have it be in the upper right. So let's just go ahead and uh, drop it by 20. Just uh, 
a solid value. Okay, so that should do it. That'll make it in the upper right corner. Got the score box. Now let's go ahead and set the text of the score box. Uh, dot text. Now the only problem is, is that we can't uh, immediately put the score in. We uh, need to go ahead and convert that score value to a string value to put as the text. So we're going to go ahead and say that, use that, ver that variable called score to string and set it equal to the score and then use our to string function. That just converts it. That just converts it. Now we can say, now we can go ahead and go to scorebox.txt and we can set that equal to uh, score to string value. Okay, so now we have we should have a score box, and let's just run this. Let's see, um, it should be in the upper right. Oops, what did I do? What did I do? Let's see here. Oh, well, oh, it's not what I thought it was, because I think because I, I also forgot to do something, and maybe you can. Uh, uh, remember what I probably did wrong. Oh, oops, I put those, um, oh, yes, I, that was silly of me. I put those uh, opening and closing uh, parentheses. Um, you don't do that on a data type. That's when you're creating the new text field. Um, so, yeah, get, just get rid of those. Uh, got ahead of myself. And, oh, wait, look at that. I See, I thought it was going to call me on this, the import uh, for the text field. Uh, I guess it must have added it for me. Um, I thought it was going to totally ding me on that. Uh, but I it added it for me. I was lucky, wasn't I? All right, so now, all right, so there they are, right. And there is my score box up here. Okay, good. All right, so let's start doing our detection. Let's start doing working on our detection. So we already have we already have a um, a move this move ball function going, and that's moving the ball around, and it's on every enter frame. And when you are doing hit detection, you usually do need to use an enter frame event listener because you always have to be co constantly looking. Uh, for whether or not one object is hitting another object. It constantly has to be checking, 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 checking. So we can just really add on to our already existing move ball function uh, that's running. And we'll just add our check. And so what we want to do is we want to run through our square array. Uh, so we want to say, we want to look at my ball. We want to do a hit test object. And uh, we want to look at whether or not it's hitting one of the squares in the array. Now, in order to access one of the squares in the array, of course, we would normally say square array. And then in the square brackets, we would put a position number. And then we would say what we wanted it to do. Now, of course, the only problem is that this is only accessing one position. It's only checking against one position. We need to check against all of them. Therefore, what do we need to do in order to check against for uh, check all of the squares in the array? Well, I know that you're saying, well, we need a for loop, Mary, and that is correct. We do need a for loop. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say for, and let's see here. We're not using the integer i any place here, so we can use the local variable of i. We haven't used it in this function. And we'll set that at 0. And while i, 
just like we were doing when we were going through our enemy arrays. We're going to say while i is less than the square array dot length, so however many items are in that square array. And then we will increment the i value. And then we will have what we want it to do in that for loop. So it's the if statement is going to be inside of that for loop. And we need one more closing curly bracket after our if statement, of course, to close out the for loop. Otherwise, everything will be in this for loop. And that's not good. And notice how I have the curly bracket lining up with the for. Um, you know, you don't have to do that. It's just like it. But I, I like to keep my curly brackets lined up. It makes things a little bit easier to uh, make sure that I have all the curly brackets that I need. OK, so now that we have that set up, now we can actually go ahead and instead of uh, just looking at one particular position, we will put in wherever it's at in the loop, uh, looking at the I position. So of course, the first time through, it'll be looking at the zero uh, position, whether or not the ball is hitting it, and then the first position, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now we want to tell, we want to, uh, we want it to do something. We want it, it to, um, uh, uh, we want it to, of course, remove. Uh, we're going to go ahead and have the square being removed. We also are going to go ahead and have the, um, uh, we want to also splice it from our square array. Yeah. So let's go ahead and do that first. So we're going to talk to the square array. And uh, we'll say splice. And then um, we want to say what position at the I position and how many pieces do you want to take out of the array? We only want to take one out of the array. We're only going to take one place out of the array. And then we're also going to go ahead and we're going to remove a child and uh, the whatever the square is at the array position of I. Oops. There we go. OK, so it's going to look at the uh, square that's at that position and remove that. OK, so that's what we're going to work on. That's what we're going to do first and get those taken care of. All right, so let's see. We're going to uh, throw the, uh, let's go ahead and run this here. Oh, and we have an error. Let's see, what do we have here? And, oh, I'm missing um, uh, a, uh, it says I'm missing a, a wrong, some kind of brace here. So let me take Okay, so yes, uh, I forgot that uh, last uh, parentheses. I needed, we needed double parentheses at the end. You probably found that. You probably saw it, didn't you? So, okay, so when we run this now, uh, what you'll notice is that, I mean, the squares are uh, going away. We have a lot of errors, though. It's a little bit dodgy. The, you know, the, the squares do eventually go away. I mean, sometimes it takes a while because there's all these errors up here. And one of the reasons that there's all these errors up here is because what's happening is that when the uh, ball is over one of the squares, it, it keeps on trying to remove that square. And it, we, need to, we need for this splicing and this 
uh, removing of the child to only happen one time. We, um, even though it seems like it's very fast, it actually detects um, that it's you know more than one time. It's like over there, and it c keeps trying to remove the same item, and that just gets it all confused and not good. So we need to basically be able to assign to the square whether or not it has been hit or not. So we're going to go over to our square 2 class that we created. And we are going to uh, create a public variable so that way our parent class can read this variable. And this is is as how we create a custom property for our class that we can read and talk to and even write to. And so we're going to call this current hit. And it's going to be a Boolean data type. And a Boolean data type is a data type that can only be true or false. It can't be any other uh, it can't be any other value. And so we're going to, by default, set this to false. It's going to be, by default, set to false. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add another, we're going to add a public function uh, to this. And uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to call it uh, that we want to, um, we're going to call it the change hit or something like that. Change hit. And this can be a regular uh, function. And we're not returning any data type. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to talk to the current hit. And we're going to say that we want it to equal true. We just want it to equal true. So when this is run, uh, that will change to true. OK. That value will change to true. So now that we have that set up, in the throw me, what we can do is we can, as it's looping through our square array, we can create yet another if statement in here. So it's going to say, okay, if it's, t if it's hitting that particular square, then we're going to say we're going to do another check before we, before we go and start splicing and removing. We're going to do another check. We're going to say if, and we're going to talk to uh, whatever position it's at, the square array, square array, I position, and we're going to say, and we're going to say, we're going to look at the current hit. Now, if we write it like this, just if square array, the current position, current hit, well, that's saying, that's shorthand for saying, if the current hit of that current square is, is true. What we want to see is if it's false. So we're going to put an exclamation point in front of that statement. And that now checks to see whether or not the current hit of that square is false. If it is false, then we want to go ahead and splice our square array, that position out, and we want to remove that square from the from the uh, from the stage, and of course we need our closing if uh, our closing curly bracket for this if statement, and then that curly bracket goes with this if statement, and this curly bracket goes with this for. So there should be four curly brackets at the end here. Now, uh, the reason that that uh, now we need to we still haven't created it so that it won't keep looping through this when we don't want it to. So what we need to do before we go and splice this square out of the array, we want to go ahead and talk to that 
square at that position. And we want to run that change hit function. So it's going to go ahead, it's going to run that change hit function. And then it will splice the array and it will remove itself from the, uh, from the stage. Okay. Oh, actually, whoops. We should actually uh, flip that around. Actually, the removing should happen before we splice it. There we go. Okay, now let's go ahead and now let's run this. And you can see now that this works much better. And, and you'll notice too that um, if I go like that and just try to get free, free points, uh, no, not going to happen. And if you remember, that is because, that is because, remember that we turn off this move ball enter frame when we are dragging. So there's no free points in this game, let me just tell you. All right, so finally now we need to do our calculate score. And if you want to uh, copy that function calculate score over from your add enemy class, you can do that. That's fine. Should work just fine, I think. We even called our text boxes and all these variables the same thing. Um, if we didn't, then just ver you know change the variable names as necessary. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and create the calculate score box now. Uh, calculate uh, score function. Okay, so I'm just going to do this at the bottom here as our last function. Calculate score. And it does not return a data type. And now we just want to talk to the score. And I'm going to just increment it like so. I'm going to convert that score to the string to string function and go ahead and set the score box text to my new value score to string okay all right, now we just need to call this function, calculate score. Okay, so uh, we want to do that, of course, when the ball hits the square. So we're just going to add on to where this hit detection happens, and we'll just go ahead and say calculate, calculate score. There we go. So now we'll run this. And yes, we in fact do have a ball that is taking away all of the squares and adding up the score. All right, thanks.